every horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, presents by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Boxer band fights hard and fair, so in the ring you kids beware, he's dynamite because he knows he's got go power from Cheerios, yes he's got go power, there he goes, <laughs> he's feeling his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. Cheerios, the cereal everybody loves, no other cereal looks like Cheerios, it's shaped like little letter O's, no other cereal tastes like Cheerios. It's the only ready-to-eat cereal with this fresh toasted oat flavor. No other cereal is like Cheerios. You see, Cheerios is made from oats. And every delicious spoonful of Cheerios and milk is real muscle-building food. Each spoonful contains vitamins, minerals, and proteins your body needs. Yes, the good things in a Cheerios breakfast do good things for your body. Help you have healthy nerves, good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Have Cheerios every morning. Then you'll hear people say... He's stealing his Cheerios. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fella. I'll Silver. In the town of Boxville, Sheriff Joe Prindle stood in front of his office, beside a federal marshal, watching three men board a chartered stagecoach. Two of the men were deputy marshals. The third, known as Moose Varney, was handcuffed. Varney, an escaped convict, had been captured in Sheriff Prindle's territory and held there until the marshal arrived to take him back to prison. We're all set, marshal. Don't take any chances with that, Cook. No, sir. Go ahead in the stage. I'll be along later. Right. I'll catch up to you. Let's go, driver. Yeah. Yeah. You going to stay here in Boxville for a while, Marshal? Only for a few minutes, Sheriff. I'd uh, like a few words with you before I leave. All right. Let's go into my office, hmm? I'm sure glad to get Moose Varney off my hands. Sit down there, Marshal. Varney's mighty tough. While he was here in jail, I couldn't relax for a minute. You deserve a lot of credit for catching him. Me? Well, I didn't capture Varney. No? I thought you did. Oh, I slapped the handcuffs on him, but I don't deserve any credit for that. By the time I reached his hideout, he was licked to a fair thee well. Well, who did it? The man who found his hideout. The Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger? Yep. (laughs) I reckon you've heard of him, hmm? (laughs) Who hasn't? Do you mean to say the Lone Ranger was right here in this county? He's still in this county. I want to see him. I'm sorry, Marshal, but that's out of the question. Why? He's just recovering from a wound. The Lone Ranger wounded? Yep. He stopped a bullet in the capture of Moose Varney. Oh, was he seriously hurt? Well, he's getting along all right, but he's lost considerable blood, so he's weak. Does he have a good doctor? His engine pal Tonto is taking care oh, of. Oh, he should have a doctor, the best he's you can... He's getting along all right, Marshal. I shouldn't have said anything about him being wounded. He wouldn't want it generally known. Well, I'll keep it to myself. Yeah, I wish you would. Just forget that you heard any mention of the Lone Ranger. Well, I'll do that, but I want to know that he's getting the best of care. He is, he is. I'll tell you, confidentially, he's in my sister's home. Oh. Jenny and her husband have a nice house out on a small ranch a couple of miles from town. And Tonto and the masked man are both staying there. Well, I'm glad the Lone Ranger's getting good care. Now, Marshal, you uh, said you wanted to speak to me about something? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, talking about the Lone Ranger, I clean forgot. I wanted to tell you about the bank robbery. Bank robbery? Where? Grantsville. Two men held up the Grantsville Bank in broad daylight and got away with $20,000 in paper money. 
Are the crooks known? No. Nope. There isn't even a description of them. They had their faces covered. Well, if no one knows what they look like, they'll be safe. Not if they try to spend that stolen money. It was from a new shipment of currency, so the bank has a record of the numbers on the stolen bills. Oh. We're distributing printed copies of the list to all the towns in this area. Here's a batch of them for you. Oh, thank you. Uh-huh. I'll see that they're circulated here in Boxville. Well, thanks, Sheriff. Now oh, I'd better get going. After the marshal rode out of town, Sheriff Quindle called at each of Boxville's business establishments and left a copy of the list of stolen bills. That evening, two strangers in town stood in front of a restaurant across the street from the express office and stage station. One was Gopher Ryan, a bank robber and murderer, well known to the law a few hundred miles away. Ryan's partner, a man named Garnet, held a carpet bag containing the money stolen from the nearby town of Grantville. I hear the stagecoach. Yeah, it's coming. It'll stop across the street at the express office. You better go over there and be ready to board it. Yeah. Wait just a minute. How much cash you got in your pocket? A couple of dollars. Why? That won't take us far on the stage. You broke? Yeah. We'll have to use some of the stolen cash. Well, there's plenty of it in the carpet bag. I'll take out a hundred dollars or so. You turn around so you're back to the street so people won't see what you're doing. Yeah, right. You keep your eyes open. Let me know if anyone comes close. Yeah, I'm watching. Oh, oh, oh. Stage is stopping. Hurry, got it. Please may not stand there very long. Brian. Hey, what's the matter? We can't spend any of this cash. What? Look there. Paste it on the window of the restaurant. What is it? A list of the stolen bills. Well, of all the luck. I just happened to see it when I turned my back to the street. Fine thing. Chances are every place in town has the same list. Every place in other towns as well. Yeah, and people are suspicious of new paper money. They always look it over very careful. And be sure to check the numbers on our bills. We don't dare spend it. We can't board the stage without cash. Got it. But what do we do? You figured out, Ryan. You're the smart hombre. It was your idea to abandon the horses. They got it. Look at the man who's unloading packages in the stagecoach. What about him? That's Pete Chester. Pete Chester? Yeah, I remember him. He was in the Missouri prison when we were. There's always cash in the express office. And that's where Pete is working. A few minutes later, Pete Chester sat at a desk making out a report when he heard the back door open and close. I should lock that door. I'd better see who's in the back room. Before Pete could push back his desk chair, two men came from the storeroom. Well, if it isn't Pete Chester. How are you, Pete? Ah. Uh, I can't seem to place you, gents. Why, have you forgotten your prison days in Missouri, Pete? Gone. Remember me, Pete? Go for Ryan? Yes, you were doing a life term for murder. How'd you get out of prison? Busted out. Garner was in for armed robbery. He was paroled about a year after you left. And the law is looking for you, Ryan. They're looking for both of us. God had violated his parole by leaving Missouri. How about you, Pete? I'm square with the law. I finished my term and came here. Working at honest toil, huh, Pete? What's wrong with that? Oh, nothing at all. We're glad to see you working here, Pete. You'll be able to help a couple of old pals. We were never pals. Oh, that's all right, Pete. You'll be able to help us in spite of that. What do you want? Just a little favor. Now, listen, get this straight. There's no use trying to blackmail me because you can't do it. I have friends here in Boxville, and they know all about my past. So does the sheriff, and so does the manager of this express office. Take it easy, Pete. We never even thought of blackmail. We just want to borrow some cash. I haven't any cash. Oh, not from you, Pete. We'll borrow what's in that safe. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Cause champions are made, not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Champions are made, not born. There's an adage that's ever so true. For instance, Slam and Sammy Sneed, a golfer as good as they come. Young Sam learned golf the only way. He practiced hours every day, chipping them short, driving them long. And soon he learned what keeps champs strong. Wheaties with milk, you can't go wrong. Today, Sam rates the gallery's cheers. A Wheaties eater, 17 years. Right, Sammy Sneed is a Wheaties eater from way back. 
plenty of nourishment in Wheaties. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Okay, Sammy, drive that ball. Hey, hey, hey! He's on his way, on his way. He's on his way, on his way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Because champions are made not for... Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Breakfast of champions. Now to continue. As Pete Chester faced the two men with whom he had been in prison, he knew that they were ready and willing to shoot to kill. He said... You mean this is a stick-up? Yeah. Careful, got it. Don't let your gun be seen by people on the street. Keep it under your coat. <laughs> the joke's on you. The safe is locked and I can't open it. The office manager's the only one who knows the combination. You think I need the combination? I've opened better safes than that one. I could have opened the safe in the Grantsville bag if it had been necessary. Grantsville? So you two are the ones... Teddy, I'm covering you, Pete. You robbed the bank? Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. What's funny about it? Of the whole country, you came to this area to rob a bank. What about this area? The Lone Ranger's here. What? Lone Ranger? Yes, he and Tonto are both here. They're the ones who tracked us down to Missouri. I know it. They'll track you down again. You can't get away. Oh, we'll get away, Pete. After we get the cash in that safe we're leaving on the buckboard we saw in the shed. And just to make sure you don't spread the alarm, we'll take you with us. Yeah, I'll take your gun. Hey, got it. Someone's stopping out front. Uh, pull the shade over the window and lock the door. Yeah, there's two ladies coming toward the door. An engine. Now, listen, Pete. You get rid of him fast. Don't say anything to make him suspicious. If you try any tricks, I'll shoot you and the Indian. The guard. He's the Lone Ranger's pal. He's sure to recognize us. Me come for package. The office is closed. Uh, a package addressed to Tonto. Me take it now. But I have I'll to... Do... me wait till you were through with other fellas. Get your hands up, Injun. Ice him. Yeah, he recognizes just as you said he would. Yeah, how about that, Tonto? Remember us? Who you? Try to be smart and make out you don't remember us, huh? Well, that won't help you. Take his gun, got it, and lock the door and draw the window shade. Yeah. I'll keep Pete and Tonto covered. Well, I've got his gun. What do we do with the engine? We've both got a score to settle with him and the Lone Ranger. Yeah. We'll rope and gag these two and take them with us. Maybe later we'll figure out a way to get the Lone Ranger. As Tonto watched Garnet lock the door and draw the window shade, he realized that now, if ever, was the time to make his move. With lightning speed, he leaped at Ryan. Yes. You let go. Before the outlaw could fire, his gun hand was clamped in Tonto's fingers. I'll help you, Tonto. As Pete stepped forward, Garnet came from the window with his gun uplifted like a club. Yeah, you fool. Get the engine, right? Garnet struck again, and Tonto dropped to the floor beside Pete Chester. The fools? Did they think they could get away with a move like that? Why didn't you shoot when the Indian leaped at you? A shot in here would bring half the town. Yeah, that's right. I right, lock the back door and bring some ropes so we can tie and gag these two while they're unconscious. All right. Then we'll open that safe. At the Newton Ranch House, Randy and Jenny sat in the kitchen where they could hear if the Lone Ranger called from the adjoining bedroom. Presently, Randy looked at his watch and said, I reckon Tano will be back soon. He planned to call on the sheriff after he went to the express office. He may talk for quite a while. Oh, it doesn't matter. I just... Horse coming. Yeah, that's probably Tano. <coughs> I'll open the door and see. <coughs> hey, Jenny. Scout came back without Tano. He's raising a ruckus, Randy. What ails him? I don't know. You'd better take him to the corral. Yeah, but I wonder where Tano is. Scout, easy. Come on, Come on. Scout continued to whinny, rear, and paw the ground as Randy led him to the corral. The behavior of the paint horse was something new to the rancher. He couldn't understand it. Randy was even more bewildered when he returned to the kitchen and said, When I led Scott to the corral, Silver started cutting up the same way, pawing the ground and winning. They're sure making plenty of noise. But Scott refused to go into the corral. I had to tie him to the rail. I never saw such spirited horses. I don't know how to handle them. Randy? The Lone Ranger's calling from the bedroom. Oh, yes? Please come in here. Right. I knew the horses would wait to me. Oh, hi there. Randy, what's going on at the corral? Why? Oh, 
Nothing at all. I, I reckon Silver and Scout are feeling high spirited. Scout? Uh, I thought I heard him. Uh, yeah, he came back from town. Well, where's Tonto? Well, Tonto wasn't with him. He wasn't. Now, now, take it easy. Lie back there. Don't try to sit up. Oh, I'm all right. Just a little weak. Have you heard from Tonto? No, I reckon Scout ran away from him. Scout never runs away. Well, he came here dragging the reins, and I led him to the corral, but couldn't get him to go inside. He reared and pawed the ground, and then Silver started. Silver understood. I'm going to dress. Now, hold on. You can't get out of bed. No. Tonto wants you to stay there. Tonto's in trouble. Scout knew it and came to tell me. Now, look. If you'll get back into bed, I'll ride to town and look for Tonto. I'll even get the sheriff. I may need your help. Well, then I'll Will help. you saddle Silver while I'm dressing? What? Saddle Silver? You stand still. Look, if you'd only let me ride for you. I'd be glad to have you ride with me. When Randy entered the corral carrying the saddle, Scout and Silver seemed to know that their whinnies were understood and that action was to be taken. They stood quietly while Randy saddled the big white stallion and his own horse. He was tightening a cinch when the Lone Ranger approached the corral. The masked man was fully dressed and his guns were tied low. Here he is, Silver. Your horse is ready. Oh, thanks, Randy. Hello, Silver, old fella. He's sure glad to see you. Will you untie Scout? Scout? I'm counting on him to lead us to Tonto. Scout, where is Tonto? Take us to him, Scout. Yeah, he's untied. Go on, Scout. Find Tonto. Oh, go on, look at him go. He's east of it. Come on, Randy, we'll follow him. I'm with you. Come on, Silver. Get up, get up there. The Lone Ranger felt new strength surging through his body as he followed Scout across the moonlit plain. Randy's horse was far behind when Silver brought the masked man to the front of the express office. Oh, Silver, oh, he's a big fellow. Scout halted there, reared high and whinnied, then dashed between two buildings, past the shed behind the office, and on across flat open country. Come on, Silver! The masked man stayed close behind the paint horse. Meanwhile, Randy drew rein in front of the sheriff's home and fired into the air. Oh, hold it! Hold, hold it! Sheriff Prindle opened the door. Tonto's in trouble. The Lone Ranger's riding to help him. The Lone Ranger? I'm following him. I'll wait for you. You better come. Right. Chester lay yeah. helplessly tied and gagged on the floor of the buckboard. Gopher Ryan drove the team at top Hello. speed. You're in a mighty big hurry, Ryan. I want to put lots of distance between us and the town. We make better time without those two in back. Let's shoot them and throw them out. Oh, no, got it. They might come in handy. I've got a plan to use them as bait for a trap to get the Lone Ranger. Get the back. Huh. Hey, Ryan, there's two horses following us. Yeah? See for yourself. They're gaining fast. Got it. Is it a trick of the moonlight or... One of those horses without a rider. I don't see a rider on the first horse, but there's someone riding the other. Looks white in the moonlight. It is white, like the Lone Ranger's horse. Oh, Ryan, I think that is the Lone Ranger. He's riding past the other horse. Look at him go. Get up, get up, get up. These horses go as fast as they can. Yes. That man's closing in fast. Let's shoot him. The gentleman? No, how can anyone shoot from a bouncing wagon? Shoot some more. You've got to get him or he'll get us. We're easy targets on this open wagon. Oh, He's still coming. If you can't hit him, try for the horse. My gun's empty. Hey, boy, get to that. that oh, can't it. take any aim. Bring in or I'll start shooting. The Lone Ranger's drawing a gun. He's shooting. Oh, got it. My shoulder. Get to that. Come on, get up. I'll get him. I've still got Tonto's gun. Ryan turned to fire, but the oncoming masked man shot first. No! A silver bullet struck the outlaw on the side with force enough to knock him from the wagon. He hit the ground, rolled a few yards, then lay motionless. The Lone Ranger was tired from the ride, but he managed to keep Garnet covered with a gun while he cut the ropes and gags of Toto and Pete Chester. Now, Kimasabi, you rest. We tie crooks. We'll take over. 
Gosh, I was never so glad to see anyone in all my life. Ah, uh, horseman comes. Now that's the sheriff leading him. Oh, oh, he's due for a surprise. When he hears we've got the money from the Grantsville Bank and the crooks who stole it. The sheriff took charge when he arrived with Randy and two townsmen. The crooks were tied, their wounds dressed, and placed aboard the wagon. Then Prindle turned to the Lone Ranger. Well, mister, we're sure indebted to you. No, Sheriff. I'm the one who's in debt. I'll always feel indebted to you and Jenny and Randy. Oh, Jenny and I are proud to have you in our house. Thanks, Randy, and thanks for everything you've done. I'll help the sheriff take the prisoners to the town. Then I'll see you in town at the house. Uh, we'll be gone by the time you get there. Gone? Yes, we'll stop only long enough to pack our gear and say goodbye to Jenny. Oh, now, but you... I'm all right now, Randy. Ah. Uh-huh. He must probably be good as new in two, three days. Strength come back. Stand. We'll meet again. I oh, sure hope so. So do I. Adios. So Adios. 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 Hey, I just remembered. There's a package in the express office for Tonto. Yeah? Oh, you'll probably get a letter or a telegram, Pete, telling you where to send it. Tonto came to the office to get it. That's when he walked into all the trouble. The package isn't for Tonto. It holds silver bullets for the Lone Ranger. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boyd. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording...